Good morning, friends, and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, and friends, we will rejoice and be glad in it. For today, we have another opportunity in our lives to say yes to the presence of God to say yes to the call of Jesus Christ to follow Him as faithful disciples, to say yes to the presence of the Holy Spirit moving in our hearts, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits, calling us to lives that follow God out into the world to live the truths that we proclaim in our worship. Friends, on behalf of the people and the ministry of the Old First Presbyterian Church in Huntington, New York, with great joy, with great excitement, with great passion and enthusiasm, it is a privilege to welcome each and every one of us into this time and space for worship to invite each and every person who shares this worship journey with us deeper into relationship with God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, know this. If you learn anything in today's service of worship, that God is calling you. God is calling you in Jesus Christ. May you hear the voice of God calling you to go. To go and in interact with people and places and situations that are longing for the love of God, grace of Jesus Christ, and power of the Holy Spirit. And when you hear that call upon your life, may we learn in this time of worship to say yes to God. To say to God, here I am, Lord, send me. And then watch, wait, and prepare to see what God will do with the gift of our lives. 
Friends, this is exciting and joyful things that we get to proclaim in our worship, and it begins with today's call to worship with Psalm 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased the strength of my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of God. For though the Lord is on high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill God's purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Friends in Christ, giving thanks to the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. May we train our ears to hear God's call upon our hearts and answer, Here I am, Lord, send me. And friends, may we begin by lifting our hearts and voices in joyful and joy-filled praise as we share today's opening hymn, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Friends in Christ, today's first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. 
We often share this scripture in the life of the church, but more often than not, we do it through the gift of music. For friends, this is the call of Isaiah the prophet. That call from God that began Isaiah's journey into sharing God's word with God's people. A call that ended with Isaiah saying words of faith that we love to sing in the Presbyterian church. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Friends, as we think today about what it means for us as God's people to say yes to God's call upon our hearts and lives and where God may call us to go with that invitation, may we hear those words with a new and renewed sense of longing and desire to hear God's call and to answer like Isaiah. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Friends, may we listen together for God's word from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I. Send me. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we continue to worship together, I invite all of our young disciples to gather closer to their screens as together we share a special time with one another. Thinking about this wonderful moment, not only in Isaiah's life, but in each of our lives, friends, when God calls to us and we have the opportunity to respond faithfully and joyfully, here I am, Lord. Send me. A very special good morning and welcome to all of our wonderful young disciples who are worshiping with us today. Friends, I love that scripture reading that we just shared. And part of it is I love the opportunity we are given to hear how we can respond to God. Part of it is that that scripture has given rise to one of my favorite hymns of all time, and I'll bet some of you may be able to guess what it is. I'll give you a hint. We're going to sing it later in today's service. But friends, it is, Here I Am, Lord. And friends, one of the reasons I love it is because it reminds me of how we are supposed to respond to God in our lives. 
And the challenge, young disciples, is the way we are supposed to respond to God in our lives is exactly how we struggle to respond to other people almost on a daily basis. Here's what I mean. Have you guys ever been maybe playing a video game or outside with friends or maybe lost in a really good book or maybe you're just enjoying time by yourself in your bedroom and you hear one of the adults in your life call your name and they say something like, Matthew, and you say, what, friends? Usually we say, just a minute, or hang on, or wait a minute, or maybe we just kind of pretend that we didn't hear them calling. At least that's how it works in my house sometimes. Because, friends, sometimes we are so lost in what we are doing that when someone else calls our name, we really don't want to stop. We don't want to be distracted. We want to keep doing what we are doing. But friends, today, one of the things I want us to think about as young disciples trying to figure out how we live this life of faith is to hear God's voice calling us and to not say to God, wait a minute, God. Hang on just a moment. I, I'll, I'll get to you as soon as I can. Or maybe even pretend like God isn't calling us at all or that we can't hear God, but instead to use the example we see in Isaiah and later with the disciples and hear God call us to something new or to some place to go and share God's love or to show us someone who needs a reminder that they are not alone. And instead of ignoring that call or pushing it aside for another time to simply say what Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Because friends, I know that each and every one of you has amazing gifts and skills and talents that God is already using to do amazing things for this world and for our church and for our communities and for the lives of people in need. But friends, if we do not hear God's call and answer, here I am, Lord, send me, then sometimes we miss those moments. And young disciples, I never want any of you, I never want us as a church family to miss a moment to use what God has given us to share the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit with others. So friends, join me this week in learning and in disciplining ourselves. Not only to hear God call us to follow, but to answer in those moments, here I am, Lord, send me. Friends, let's pray together and we'll ask for God's help. You may repeat after me. Dear God, we give you thanks that you call each one of us to love you and to serve you. When we hear your call, May we answer, here I am, Lord, send me. In Jesus' name, and together, young disciples, may we say, amen. Well, young disciples, I wish you wonderful conversation with your family and your friends this week as together we learn to listen for God and to say to God, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. And then see, friends, how powerfully God will use each and every one of us to share God's love.
Friends in Christ, what a powerful witness, not only for our young disciples, but for all of us together as a people of faith to devote ourselves to listening for the voice of our God calling us in mind, body, and spirit, and rather than ignoring that call, to simply respond, Here I am, Lord, send me. What a powerful witness our response may continue to be for this world. In the same way, friends, that the disciples heard Jesus calling in their lives. And they too responded faithfully and followed Him. And imagine, friends, the things that they saw and did and experienced. And that we are invited to join with them in seeing and doing and experiencing still today. Friends, that is what I invite us to listen for as we share today's second reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. As we have over these last few weeks, we are still in the early days of the life and ministry of our Christ. And here in Luke's Gospel, Jesus begins that process of calling people to follow. And note, friends, not only what happens when the disciples listen to Jesus, but also in listening and in seeing what Jesus is capable of doing in and through their lives, how they respond by following God. And friends, may we respond by doing the same. But first, let us listen together for God's Word from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, beginning with verse 1. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let your nets down for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, They caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed Jesus. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, last year, Netflix featured a movie called Yes Day starring Jennifer Garner as a once adventurous woman who said yes to everything life threw in her path until she and her husband welcomed three children into their lives. This prompted them to go on that journey that every parent has lived where we say no to anything and everything to keep our loved ones safe, protected, and structured. Long story short, friends, in Yes Day, the family commits to one day of saying yes to anything the kids choose. And so together they go out, they have some fun. Of course, things go terribly wrong. 
Humorous hijinks ensue. Everything is resolved at the end of the movie, and together the family realizes that neither extreme is good. That yes, saying no provides much needed structure and expectation, but that sometimes you have to let go and say yes to provide the time and space for fun, freedom, and flexibility. Not a bad lesson for us to learn right here in the life of faith, is it not, friends? Because as we often realize when we look back, back into the history of the church, back into the history of our own congregation, back even to the history of our own faith journeys, There are far more seasons and situations than we probably care to admit, friends. We're saying no. No to the voice of God. No to new opportunities to grow, stretch, and challenge our faith. No to new places, new people, and new ways of sharing our faith with others. No to new situations, new methods, new ways of being the church. New opportunities to share the love of God, grace of Jesus Christ, and power of the Holy Spirit at work among us has more often than not been our status quo. And on one hand, that makes sense to us, does it not, friends? Because more often than not, saying no at least seems in the moment to be the safer option. Because saying no does not require some risk to our personal sense of comfort. Saying no does not demand that we put ourselves into new places where we do not know what to expect. Saying no does not present a challenge that may result in our feeling unsure or uncomfortable or being rejected by others or heaven forbid friends experiencing what the world says we can never experience failure as a people of faith. But friends, if we think back to both of today's readings from Scripture, Beginning with that first reading from the prophet Isaiah, can we even begin to imagine the vast amount of ministry and prophetic power that Isaiah would have lost out on in his life had he allowed his no to be his final answer to God's call upon his life? What if, friends, Isaiah heard that call of God to go, to be sent, and decided that he was just too sinful to follow God, that his lips were just too unclean to speak God's word, and his no was the end of his story? And what if the same was true for those first disciples of Jesus Christ in today's reading from the Gospel of Luke? What if Simon, James, and John would have made the easier choice out there in the boat on the lake that day with Jesus? What if when Jesus told them to go out into the deeper waters and cast their nets again, what if they had made the more sensible choice, the easier choice? Looked at Jesus in the boat and said, No, not today, Jesus. We're tired. We're stressed out. We've been fishing all night. We haven't caught anything. We just don't have the interest or the energy to do it your way. And besides, how do you think you know more about fishing than us? So we're just going to go ahead, Jesus, and say, no, not today. It would have been the easier way, yes? It's such a simple word, friends, to say. Two letters, one syllable. A word that each one of us says countless times each and every day in our lives and probably even more often when it comes to invitations to try something new or different in our lives. Something that pushes, pulls, or drags us out of our comfort zones and into some new place. No! Go ahead and say it with me now, friends. Just say the word. No! You see how easy it is to say. No, I'm not interested. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I've never done it that way before or here in the life of the church. No, we've never done it that way before. No. 
You see how easy, friends, that word is. And it's a done deal, right? Two letters, one syllable, no, and that is the end of that. But friends, can you imagine? Can we even begin to imagine how the story of our faith would be radically different today? How the story of our church our families, our communities, and our world would never have been the same if people like Isaiah, Simon, James, and John, if each and every one of us still today, friends, would always say no to the call of God upon our hearts and lives. And then we allowed our no to be the end of our story. Better yet, friends, imagine if Jesus himself would have said no to God. What if Jesus had ended that season of passionate prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed that God would allow his life to be spared from the painful and humiliating death on the cross? What if that prayer, friends, had ended with Jesus saying no to God? Would we still know today that great and powerful love of God that knows no boundaries? That love of God that is so deep and so abiding that nothing in this world can separate us from its power and presence in our lives? Would we know the love of God that meets us in the midst of lives that far too often are dominated by that simple yet final word, no? That far too often we allow to be our response to God's call upon our hearts and lives. And in saying no to God, cut ourselves off from the countless blessings, privileges, opportunities, and joys that God longs to pour out into our hearts and lives. Those joys and blessings that God longs to shower down upon our church and the ministry we share through our thoughts, our words, and deeds, through the relationships we have with God in Jesus Christ. That desire to grow with us and us with God that God longs for and desires more than anything else for each and every one of us today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives and in an instant with one single word, no. We can end it all. But friends, Isaiah did not say no. Instead, Isaiah welcomed and embraced the healing power of God at work in his heart and life. He allowed God's forgiveness and grace to put a new spirit of willingness within him, that voice that responded with joy, Here I am, Lord, send me. And Simon, James, and John did not say no to the call of Jesus Christ in their lives. Instead, friends, they said yes to God. They left their nuts and their boats overflowing with the catch of a lifetime. They welcomed and embraced the healing power of God at work in their hearts and lives. They allowed the forgiveness and grace of God to put new spirits of joy within them and leaving everything behind in an instant, they followed Jesus. And they became fishers of people. And friends, Jesus himself did not say no to God. Instead, Jesus himself said yes to God, giving his life for the sin that belongs to each and every one of us dying and rising again so that we may know the love of God, grace of Jesus Christ, and power of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives, in our church and in our ministry, in this world that we are called to live in and share God's love with. Each opportunity, friends, that can be an opportunity for us to say no, and close ourselves off from the rich blessings of faith God longs to pour out in our lives, or say yes. Say yes to God. Yes to God's forgiveness. Yes to God's grace. Yes to God's love. Yes to God's opportunities. And then live these truths. 
share these promises, grow together in faith as we continue to reach out into the lives of others and allow our yes friends to open our eyes, to allow our yes to open our hearts, to open our hands, to open our spirits, to seeing, meeting, and filling the needs of others that are all around us. If only we say yes to God. Friends in Christ, it is time. Time to share the hope we have. Time to act on our calling. Time to step out, reach out, and meet the needs that are all around us. And friends, it all begins with our desire, our opportunity, and our commitment to saying yes to the voice of God calling in our lives. To hear the voice of God ask, who will go? Who will I send? And answer faithfully, here I am, Lord. Send me. To hear the voice of Jesus Christ asking, what will you leave behind to follow me? And to answer faithfully, everything, Lord. Make us a fisher of people. Friends, to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit asking, who will you serve? What will you give? Where will you go? When will you follow? And why will you say yes? And to answer faithfully, because you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the one who lived and who died, the one who rose again, the one whose body is broken and whose blood is poured out so that we may know the power of forgiveness, love, and grace, so that we may give anything and everything in our lives to go anywhere and everywhere God has called us to go to love and serve anyone and everyone whom God has called us to love and serve so that we may never again be tempted, friends, to say no to God because it is easier or because it is safer. But instead, friends, to without question or pause say yes. Yes to the love of God. Yes to the grace of Jesus Christ. Yes to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes to every situation and every opportunity to live as examples of the unconditional love of God. Yes, to every person and to every place who stands in need of being moved by the amazing grace of Jesus Christ. Because when we say yes, friends, when we say yes to God, when we say yes to Jesus Christ, when we say yes to the power of the Holy Spirit, when we hear the call of God upon our hearts and our lives, calling us to follow, calling us to be sent, and we answer, yes, here I am, Lord, send me. Make me, make us a fisher of people. And friends, there is no limit 
to what we may accomplish together as a people, as a family of faith. Friends, for the joy, for the privilege, for the blessing of every opportunity of saying yes to our God. Thanks be to God as together God's people say, Amen. Friends in Christ, as we take our place together around the table of our Lord, 
This is a special opportunity for us both to hear the voice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ calling us to go and to answer, Here I am, Lord, send me. But friends, also, this is the perfect place to be strengthened and nourished to respond to that call with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. For friends, it is here around the table of our Lord, here among the bread broken and the cup poured out, that not only are we assured of our place in the family of God, But we are given the gifts of God for the people of God to strengthen and nourish us along life's way. Friends, as we seek to live our lives in ways that say yes to God, yes to God's presence, yes to God's call, yes to God's charge to go out and make disciples of all nations, it is here around the table of our Lord that we gather with disciples from many generations before and many to come to have our eyes opened, to have our hearts opened, our spirits opened to the presence of God among us, to know that in the bread broken and the cup poured out, we are made one as a family of faith. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all, all who trust and who believe in Him to share in this joyful feast. Friends, let us join together in today's prayer of thanksgiving, saying, The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. Friends, let us continue together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, You formed each one of us in your image and set us in this world to love and serve you. When we were captives in slavery, you delivered us to freedom. You made a covenant to be our sovereign God. When we were stubborn and stiff-necked, you spoke to us through prophets who looked for that day when justice shall triumph and peace will reign over all the earth. How can we thank you, O Lord our God? for sun and moon and stars, for breath and life and all things good, for your steadfast promise and your faithful love, for the day that is surely coming when all things will be made new, when with the saints, angels, and all of creation, we will join the ancient and eternal hymn forever singing to the glory of your holy name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. You sent him into this world to bring freedom to the captives of sin and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing in human suffering and dying an unjust death. We give you thanks, O holy God, for Jesus, your Son, our Christ, who came to be your living word who baptized us with spirit and with fire, who showed us how to feed the hungry, to humble the mighty, and to announce the good news of your coming realm. With thanksgiving, we remember. We remember how Jesus gathered with his disciples around a table many years ago, and knowing what was coming gave them the strength to face that moment with courage and with conviction, to face it with faith and confidence. And he did so, friends, by taking the bread 
Giving thanks to God, blessing it, breaking it, and saying, this is my body, broken for you. Each time you eat from it, do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink from it, do so also in remembrance of me. Friends in Christ, may we continue together in prayer. With thanks and praise, O gracious and loving God, we offer ourselves to you, mind, body, and spirit, sharing together in this holy meal, remembering the dying and rising of our Lord Jesus Christ, and praying with one another, Come, Lord Jesus, come. For great, O Lord, is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O Lord our God. Pour out your Spirit upon this bread and upon this cup. Pour out your Spirit upon all of us as your people. Bind us together as one family of faith. Make us gentle, joyful, and thankful people. Give us the power and strength. Give us the ability to hear you calling in our lives and answer, here we are. Send us, Lord. Send us to serve our neighbors. Send us to worship you alone. Send us to live and share the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ until you gather us again at table in your eternal kingdom. Hear us, O Lord our God. Hear us in these moments. Hear us as we share together in bread and cup. Hear us as we answer your call. Hear us as we drop everything else in this world so that we may follow you faithfully. Hear us as we pray together the words of prayer you taught us to share. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this moment and in all moments, in this time and in all times, in this place and in all places, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continues to call out to each and every one of us. Friends, as we gather together around table, as we share bread and cup, may we hear that call upon our hearts and upon our lives. May we answer faithfully, here I am, Lord, send me. And may we follow knowing that what lies ahead when we follow in the way of Jesus Christ is more wonderful than we may ever imagine. We know it, friends, because we have seen it in Jesus Christ. We have seen it in the One who offers us His body and His blood, broken and shed for the forgiveness of sins. Friends in Christ, may we in these moments be united as we take and eat as we take and drink and together remember that we are loved we are forgiven we are made one with jesus christ to love god to share jesus and to spread the power and presence of the holy spirit now and forevermore friends these are the gifts of god for all of us together the people of god let us take Eat, drink, and remember.
Friends in Christ, it is always a joy for us to gather together in whatever way we can, to worship God together in spirit and in truth. It is even more special holy and sacred on days like today when we gather at the table of our Lord and share that bread broken and that cup poured out. But friends, those moments of worship do not end as this service draws to a close. For friends, our lives, lives filled with opportunities to worship God in spirit and in truth through thought, word, and deed only begin again as our time of worship draws to an end, and the lives of worship that we are called to live by God begin once more. Friends, it was special for us to sing one of our favorite hymns today. In fact, can we throw the lyrics back on the screen? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. Friends in Christ, that truly is one of the great hymns of our faith. Not only that opportunity to be reminded that God is calling us, but friends, even more powerfully, that we are called to respond, to say yes to God with the gifts of our lives, to know that we are being called, to know that we are being sent, to know that ours is now the opportunity to say, here I am, Lord, send me. Friends, as we go out longing to follow Jesus Christ, may that be more than a hymn that brings tears to our eyes and joy to our hearts. May it be our motto for life that we will hear God call, that we will know that that call is upon our lives and that we will answer, here I am, Lord, send me. Friends, may we go following the Lord Jesus Christ knowing that we do not go alone, but go uplifted by the love of God, nourished by the life of Jesus Christ, and inspired by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Thanks be to God as together God's people say, Amen. Praise God from Praise Him.